good to have come to attend this life-changing lecture. My name is Paul Villa. I am an assistant coach at the University of the Pacific. And today, we're going to be talking about how to cut carbs and specifically uh, how to use the program verbatim to do that. And so, I will start out by saying, so I'm going to leave the screen, that's all. There's a, a shortcut to this, right, outside of this lecture, which has now been cut short, um, which is, if you go on YouTube, there's a channel, right? That channel is called Flickelodeon. F-L-I-C-K-E-L-O-D-E-O-N. Like Nickelodeon, but with Flick instead of Nickelodeon. And on that channel, you will see that Justin Flick, who is a former debater for Chico, uh, has created a video on this exact topic that goes very in depth on how to install verbatim, uh, other programs that are useful with verbatim, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a lot of information regarding how to do that. There's a 26 minute video. Skip the first nine and you know, call it a day, you'll be fine. But uh, before we get into like explicitly how to cut cards, I think it's important to discuss what makes up a card and why we read cards in the first place. Uh, this is a Lincoln Douglas specific lecture, but all of this also applies to policy debate in case any of you ever do that in the future, right? But basically, in debate or in forensics, we have a few kinds of debate, some of which are what is called evidentiary formats of debate, right? Where you have to cite evidence in order to support your arguments. You have to literally do so by having that piece of evidence presentable and flagged in such a way that someone can easily read it and get your argument rather than having to read through, like, if it's a congressional research report, all 119 pages, right? They don't have time for that. You don't have time to read all of that. So we have to be able to demonstrate our evidence. So there are a few parts to every card. I will draw them on this. If there's any problems with font, please do let me know. So the first part of every card is going to be our, oh, this is on caps, already. It's going to be our tag, right? Oh, the track pad is activated. Great. It's going to be our tag, which is ultimately going to be, this is going great. Uh, it's going to be our claim, right? And so, you hopefully know, based on previous lectures at this camp or just in your own life, that arguments have a few parts to them, right? We, generally speaking, talk about CWI, where C stands for claim, W stands for warrant, and I stands for impact, yeah. right? Where a claim can be defined as a statement of fact, right? A factual statement about the world that we believe is true, that asserts something, a warrant, can be defined as the evidence that supports that claim, and an impact is why that matters, right? An explanation of how a judge can evaluate that, why someone should care, because it's not enough for an argument to be true. Uh, for it to be a good argument, it has to be true and to matter, okay? So, tags and claims. What was the third one again? The third one is an impact. Same I. Impacts are ultimately what debate is about. We'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, hopefully right, but as a litmus test, if you're ever in a debate and you're trying to think, is what I'm saying worth saying or am I wasting my time? If it is an impact, gets you an impact, or takes out your opponent's impact, it is worth saying. If it is anything else, it's not worth saying. So we have the tag, and the tag is a claim. The next thing we have is a citation. And then after that, we have the actual evidence. Okay, so the citation. I'm sure many of you have written academic papers and know what a citation is. There's a lot of formats with which this is done, and I will be showing you examples. We'll go over how to actually do this in a second. I just want to make sure you understand the concepts, right? So we have a claim that is based on something someone else said. So obviously, we need to say who said it, when they said it, where they said it, and link to how someone could find that information, right? Because the rules of NFALD specify that the evidence has to be available for individuals, right? If they want to view your evidence, you have to be able to provide it. And not just your card, but the actual source in some cases, right? Because how else are we supposed to know it's true, right? If it's like, well, I wrote this, or, you know, Sasan's dad is a doctor. I could just cite him, ah, uh, he's Basrod Kesrod, Basrod Kesrod, he says that. Magic is real and hope will always triumph, right? That's insufficient, right? Because it's not in a real journal, it's not something that matters. We have to be able to analyze the evidence. So, then we have the evidence, and that'll be the actual law. But how do we do this, right? How do we make this efficient, fast, easy to do? 
And what that comes down to is the program we are currently entered into, which is verbatim. As you're probably familiar with this general layout, right? This is a Word document, you know, Microsoft Word. Verbatim is simply an add-on for uh, Microsoft Word, and I'll show you how to get that in just a second. Um, that makes it much, much easier to cut cards because it has all of these things you're seeing here. Uh, timers, recorders, statistics, a case list, the ability to create speech documents, some formatting things we'll talk about shortly. But where do we get verbatim? That's the first question, right? Uh, Google is your friend. So the website, uh, this ever looks, the website we are going to want to go to is paperless debate, which there's no internet on this laptop. Ha! That's perfect. Anywho, there's a website called Paperless Debate. Trust me on that. And if you go there, the first thing you will see is two boxes. One that says download verbatim for Word, and one that, or rather Microsoft, and one that says download verbatim for the Mac OS, right? You click that, and you have verbatim now, right? It will open up what you can see on my desktop here. There's a one here that. There's a little program right here that says verbatim. I don't know if you can see that really closely. And once you go into verbatim, it will open up this page, okay? There's one more thing I will mention that is not specific to verbatim, but is potentially useful for students who are trying to do these things. There is an extension for Google Chrome that I also won't be able to look up because there's no internet. But Wi-Fi doesn't need a password. It doesn't even need a password? No. Sweet. Let me do that real quick then, because that will make it much Public. Yeah. Public. Good call. But you do have to click. Yeah, you have to like, uh, click like an ID or whatever. If you It'll go to like, if you go to test.com. Is it test.com? Yeah. Oh, this one's already been connected before. Oh, great. So let's see this, right? So let me show you paperless debate just because I can. Get the work now. Watch that. Do you have a test.com? Yeah. Cool. Good job. Thanks, sir. How did you know that? I, I don't know. This has been going around. I heard that box. somewhere I, that, that if you go to test.com, it automatically takes you to the login. Cool. Page. So I do a paperless debate, paperless debate verbatim. You'll see it. Um, right here, you see what I'm talking about verbatim for Windows, verbatim for Mac. You download that. That's going to give you access to the program we've been talking about. But the next thing we want to look up is an extension for Google Chrome. Some of you might not use this browser. If you don't do it, then you're out of luck, which is called SiteMaker, I believe. Site Creator. Let's see if that's the word. It sure is. It's called Site Creator. And if you do this and you add this to your Google Chrome, you can already see that someone has already added it on this specific desktop. You just click this button that says On. And when you do so, when you go to a new website, let's just say I go to CNN.com for a second to show you this. I click here, and then I'll go to some new source. You see in this bottom right-hand corner? Uh -huh. It already will have, well, it should already have. Let's see if this one works best. Stormy Daniels is what it said. Sure, uh -huh. right here, cool. So you'll see here that this now has the authors of it, the URL, the title, and all that stuff. And to capture that, you just press Control-Alt-C, I believe, yes. And then if we go into verbatim, control V, we have our citation, right? So we've knocked that part. So how do we do this with a card, right? Let's pretend this is what you wanted to cut. You had this piece of evidence that said, White House aides narrow search for anonymous op-ed writer uh, to a few people, source says, right? I'm sure some of you know the op-ed we're talking about. Some people said there's like a resistance within the White House that is standing up to stop Trump or something, they're superheroes, crusading. Um, what is an op-ed? An op-ed is an opinion editorial, which means, right, you're the... Yeah, so, it's a, so when a newspaper doesn't report a story, but the writer is telling their own opinion, they call it an op-ed. Yeah. What's, that, is that, what's that short for? Opinions yeah. editorial. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, what, for some reason we're in a debate and we want to make a claim that we are very close to learning who wrote the op-ed, right? Let's say that's what we want our tagline to be. We go into our verbatim and we go tag, right? We are 
very close to learning who wrote the op-ed, okay? And we already have our citation because we captured that earlier. So now we just need the actual evidence part that says we are close, right? So we start looking through this. A is the President Trump, we have the search for the anonymous author, uh, down to a few individuals, blah, 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 blah. Let's capture that text, we just copy it, right? Copy and paste like you would if you were writing a research paper. Uh, and we're very good at it. So, right? I have made a claim. That claim is this sentence. We are very close to learning who wrote the op-ed. And I now need to, via this text down below, narrow it down to which part of this actually says that. Because I'm not going to want to spend all of my time in a debate round reading every single word from an article, right? I'm only going to want to read the parts that prove I'm right and provide me evidence. So, what do we need in this example? What would you capture if you were trying to prove that claim sentence? You were trying to prove we are very close to learning who wrote the op-ed. Why? So the question is, why is that true? It's true because the opinion piece is really no. Who said that? That's it's true because A is the President Donald Trump. Well, but, but here's the question. What in this block of text says that top sentence? The source goes to the White House, so we'll see it on Friday. We'll okay. We have to search for the anonymous on there. You're right. How about this next part? Trump is still obsessed with the person that was being counseled by the White House Chief of Staff, John Kelly, the best ball. Does any of that matter, you think? Like, is that proving that sentence or no? Okay, let me see. We are very close, buddy. We wrote the op-ed. Trump is still obsessed with Biden person. Well, he's being canceled for White House Secret Staff. John Kelly is in the past. So we're going to bring the focus to the I think for sake of argument, there's a lot more information on that second half. So we're going to talk about why that isn't a good way of evaluating that, right? Here's a question for you, right? Every debate format has a few things in common. What is one thing that all debate formats, as far as you know, have a problem? Right. Every single one has to have this. Whether it's a CNN debate or whether it's a parliamentary debate or a Lincoln Douglas debate. What do you have to have? Facts. And the facts, something. How do you know when the debate's over? Rules. Cool. How do you know how long you're supposed to talk and how long I'm supposed to talk? Rules. Rules, right? There are rules that say you get to talk for this much time. And in a world where your time is limited, and where obviously you want to put out the most in-depth or the most numerous, the most sophisticated and nuanced arguments, and still respond to your opponent, time is the only resource that matters, right? So we get, you know, uh, in some speeches three minutes, and in some speeches six minutes in uh, LD. Which means that if I have three minutes, I don't want to read anything that doesn't prove my argument, right? Saying Trump is still obsessed with finding the person does not prove we are close to finding the person. Saying White House Chief of Staff John Kelly uh, said that it's fine and that we should avoid bringing more attention to it does not prove that claim. I have a question about the claim. That is it, so that is a piece of evidence. Yes. But it's not your argument, right? It's just a piece of evidence supporting your argument. It is, it is our argument, right? So we make the claim. The claim is the actual argument. But then we have to support that evidence, or support that claim, that argument, with evidence, right? And the, everyone here has everyone heard of the modes of persuasion, right? Like pathos, ethos, and logos. Pathos yes. being emotional, ethos being credibility, logos being logic. What we're trying to do when we're citing evidence is steal someone else's credibility, right? You're the one who thinks this, but it's not just you. It's also Jim Acosta and Sophie Tatum who write for CNN. So, but your argument in this particular case is, is exactly what they say. Is that what you're saying? We're going to talk about that right now. Okay. So, so, so one thing I think I can clarify is the term argument. Like, is this a whole advantage? Like, no. This is probably one part of a larger argument. But within that argument, 
you are one part of it relies on the claim we are true yes but we are close to trump uh, finding out whoever wrote this being true this is the part where you prove that part of your larger it's story. A, it's sort of the territory i guess you know yeah, you, you'll see it. Yeah, and, and so, so for example, when we were talking about the later stuff and how that could be useful, that could be useful for a another claim, but it is not like this claim, right? So like, so if I'm trying to say like um, Trump is going to rain down fire on his administration, one part of that is me proving he's close to figuring out who it is. Another part is maybe. Me He's talking about it. saying he will do it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe another part of it is a claim that says he's he wants to punish these people. Maybe I find that in this article. Maybe I find it in a completely different article. But the idea is you want to itemize the sub parts of what you're the, the story you're trying to tell, and then prove each sub part individually. Cool. So to go back to something you just said a second ago, right? Like, is that our argument? How does this work? Do, is the evidence right? In this case, this is just an example. I just pull up some article and I'm making an argument from it. The way you would really do this is the opposite of that, right? I had picked an argument and then went and found evidence for it, right? So if I wanted to prove that Cyber Command should substantially increase actions, I would Google something like that, right? I'd search it up and be like, what is wrong with Cyber Command now? How are we vulnerable to cyber security? And then I would pull up an article that says something like that and then highlight the pieces. This is just for the sake of an example, right? But the important part is that when we're doing this, what we're looking to go to is what I call I'mRight.com, okay? We're not necessarily looking for the best, most academic, most truthful, reflective of reality piece of evidence possible. We are looking for a piece of evidence from somewhere that says what we already believe, okay? People talk about the idea of confirmation bias, right? Just looking for evidence that agrees with us. It's not a good thing from a logically sound position, but in debate, you have to have the evidence, which means some evidence is better than none. This might not be the best source, but you can probably find a better one, but until you do that, you just have to use what is available to you. But back to the topic at hand. This we is, want to prove this is for the affirmative. This is it for the people. For everyone. For every, okay, I see. So the negative, right, obviously is going to disagree with this. They're going to say, actually, no, he's not very close, and then cite NBC saying that, right? That's where the war debate kind of happens, right? Debating claims of fact. But all we're trying to prove right now is this sentence. We are very close to learning who wrote the author. And we've identified that this part right here, aides President Donald Trump believe they have a search for the anonymous author of the New York Times op-ed that shook the political world down to a few individuals, okay? So we denote that. This part that is now bolded and highlighted would be all we would read, okay, of the evidence. We wouldn't bother with all this other stuff. We would just bother with the part that supports the argument. Claim, we are very close to learning who wrote the op-ed. That's according to Acosta and Tatum in 2018. Aides of President Donald Trump believe they have the search for the anonymous author of the New York Times op-ed that shook the political world down to a few individuals. Do you see how we made a claim about the world, we found a piece of evidence that proves that is true, to some degree. Whether that evidence is valid will be debated, right? We will have a debate about it. That is the point of the debate. But all we need to understand right now is when you have an argument you want to make, you find a piece of evidence and you highlight the parts that are relevant. Right, so there is no program, though, that takes the entire evidence and in some way does that. There is a program that kind of does that but cannot be used in Lincoln-Douglas debate for college purposes. There are programs that will summarize news articles and stuff like that. That will not work for our purposes because we have to have direct quotations. No, no, I understand, but I just was wondering because it seems like it, no matter how we do this, it is, it is a sort of a subjective thing. I mean, it is, but that's the debate, right? That's the debate part of it. And you know, we, is it capital T truth, or is it just our view of the truth? How we constructed it? Do liberals agree with Republicans? Blah 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 blah. All of that is irrelevant for now. All you need to understand for the purposes of this is how to cut a carbon. Okay. So verbatim has a few functions, and some of those include the ability for us to change the formatting to make this more readable and to standardize it. Right. So our claims. We always want to do something like this, a tag, right? And when you do that, you'll note that the navigation panel now has put that argument here. So if we were looking through this later, we might have 100 cards, right? 
We need to be able to identify what the argument actually made was. A lot of people, especially me, uh, will number these, right? One, we are very close to learning who wrote the op-ed. Then you have to go to the last names of the authors, right? And you're gonna bold those so that you know to read those, right? Because you only read things which you have denoted as being worth reading. So the exact way, if we were in a debate, this is exactly what I would say. One, we are very close to learning who wrote the op-ed. That's Acosta and Tatum in 2018. Aides of President Donald Trump believe they have a search for the anonymous author of the New York Times op-ed that shook the political world down to a few individuals. I would not read a single word other than that on this card. I would move on to the next card. Number two, Trump will do this, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Does everyone understand that part? What you would read in a debate round? It's only the part that you have highlighted that you believe proves your claim statement, your tag that we talked about earlier. And those things are, you always want to bold or use the tag function under styles on the claim. You want to bold or highlight the author's last names and the publication date. And you want to bold, highlight, underline, however you stylistically choose to do it, the text you plan on actually reading. We are very close to learning who wrote the op-ed is that you, or that's a quote from Jim. Okay. That is not a quote from them. That is you a quote wrote. from me. Oh, okay. That I am saying they are implying through the evidence. Okay. You could use the exact sentence that says the search for the anonymous author uh, is down to a few individuals. You could do that, right? You just don't have to. And remember, once again, we reverse engineered this. We took a card and then made an argument. If it makes it, we have enough time. If it makes it easier, tell me an argument you want me to prove. Any argument. Uh, prove that there's no impact. There's to what? To the fact that we're getting closer to the anonymous. Cool. So you want me to prove that it doesn't matter who wrote the op-ed? Yes. Cool. Let's just Google. It doesn't matter who wrote the Trump resistance memo, was it? What was it? Op-ed. Op-ed, okay. Op it, which that already would be our claim. Right, that would be our claim. That's what we're trying to prove right now. Cool. Right here, WashingtonMonthly.com. We immediately found something that in its title says, it doesn't matter who wrote the anonymous New York Times op-ed. Cool, I'm gonna capture all of that information from the citation in the bottom right. I'm gonna put that here. I'm gonna make our claim. It doesn't matter who wrote the, I'm sorry, who wrote the anonymous op-ed, okay? And then I go to this evidence and I try and find where they explicitly says that. I'm gonna assume it's somewhere in here without even having read it because otherwise it's a bad article, right? You're gonna start off with the intro of the explanation. Cool, I take all of that text, I paste it here. They say it seems like everyone wants to know which senior administration official wrote the op-ed. Blah 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 blah. Cool. That's all it goes. The author didn't claim to be acting solo. Right from the start, the official made clear that's part of our resistance. Many senior officials in his own administration are working diligently with and frustrate and his worst inclinations. I don't see anything in there that says it that um, actually supports the statement. It doesn't matter who wrote the op-ed, right? But somewhere in here, presumably based on the title, is a claim we can find that says, ultimately, it does not matter who actually wrote the op-ed. So like, there we go, right here, the last paragraph. Let's just go to that one instead, because that literally says it. They saved it for the end, they buried the lead. Cool. It doesn't matter who wrote it, because it expressed an honest opinion shared by a very large group of people. Let's just put that in there. We have now found a piece of evidence so that's the, it, wouldn't that be the impact to the first claim, though? It could be. You, you're thinking too much in terms of actual debate terms. That's not what's important right now. Just cards. All we're looking for is cards, right? We can decide the impact. If you want to talk about nuclear war is the impact or whatever, that's totally cool. But then you need to find a card that says, first, nuclear war is likely, and second, that what nuclear war looks like, right? All we're talking about here is how to actually cut the cards. Okay? Yes, or something? What did you just do? Oh, uh, right now I just took the author's name because the author's name didn't actually appear in this citation, right? But it's the same thing. If what you asked me to find was an argument that says it doesn't matter who wrote the op-ed, right? If there is no impact to it. You could tag this and say, first is no impact, colon, it doesn't matter who wrote the anonymous op-ed. And then you'd say, 
Long live in 2018. It doesn't matter who wrote it because it expressed an honest opinion shared by a very large group of people. Cool. You've supported your argument with evidence that says it does not matter who wrote it. That is sufficient. You can use that as a block answer or something. But all we're really worried about is the format. Does everyone understand? We have a claim that we make or that we think someone else has made. We cite the person who made that claim. And then we highlight, underline, bold, whatever, the part of the text that says it. Yeah, it looks like you shook your head a little bit. What's, what's going on? Oh, no, I was just thinking about something else. Yes. So, is this true? I think it probably matters who wrote the thing. So it's not necessarily factually true, but someone believes it is. And in debates, we don't get to choose what side we're on. We just have to be assigned a side arbitrarily and defend it. So whether you agree with this statement is completely irrelevant. There is evidence that supports it as being true. Is the Washington Monthly, whatever it is, journal, a credible news source? We can have that debate. You can tell me that this author is actually a racist. This author is actually a Russian plant. Whatever you can find. I have a question about that. Sure. It, it, the Washington Monthly isn't really the source. It's Google that's the source, right? No, it's not. It's the publication from which it came from. Well, but didn't you just take that off of Google? I took this from WashingtonMonthly.com at that URL. Oh, at the I URL. Googled the question, went to a website result that had it, and then took the evidence from that. Okay, so where does that originally exist? At this, at the Washington Monthly. It Monthly. exists right here. Okay, and that's uh, a website called the Washington Monthly. And where I guess it gets, it's like where does that originate? You know, uh, what do you mean? from well, I mean, like how how do they where, how do they create that and you know this kind of thing? Yeah. So um, <laughs> depending on how like. So that's a question of like source credibility, right? Like who is the Washington Monthly? Like are right, they a right. newspaper that has a yes. website? Are they a blog? What is that? Um, and I think uh, the sort of point that Paul's getting to is one, like first you need to know how to cut a card, but two, um, every evidence is good evidence until you find something better, right? right. So if we found like, I don't know, uh, the director of the FBI making this claim, it would probably be more powerful than some random newspaper but online. But every evidence is good until you get a it's better It's definitely a less true, or is there just some evidence? It's, it's good enough have. for yeah, a debate, right? Awesome. You don't want to make a claim without evidence. So True, but, it, but, but if you make a, a claim with bad evidence, then... then yeah, okay, think if, of it this way. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, because yeah. I'm not that. Yeah. Uh, if you have evidence in a debate that you read, and I don't, who wins the debate? If I say your evidence is bad and don't have any evidence like that, I just say it, who wins the debate? Well, I guess you say that the, but uh, you say that, it, but is, aren't there other arguments besides having other evidence no, that you're debating? No, not an LD. If you don't have evidence, you lose. That's it. Oh. It is an evidentiary so form just of debate. Whatever. Somebody said this, somebody else said that. Yes. You can find evidence that says Longman is racist. This was false. This was based on a bad source, whatever you want. But if you just say that, that doesn't mean anything. Right? Because why would we trust you? Are you an expert? Did you talk to Trump? Any of these things? No, you didn't. You have just watched the news. So why not cite the news? Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't understand that. So all we have to do then is just get as many pieces of evidence as we can that contradict one another. Right? I mean, you want a piece of, you will ultimately write it. That's a discussion for like another lab, but yes, when you know someone's case right because they post it online, they'll have like their plan is cyber command should do this thing. You can find evidence that says actually this author indicts that author and says that won't work. Here's a piece of evidence that says the last time we did that it was bad. Here's a piece of evidence that says it's just factually not true, whatever you want. So, so uh, cases in LD are generally disclosed. That means the less true your case is, the easier it is for someone to do an hour in research and prove that it's wrong. Yes. So are you going to get far with evidence that isn't good? No. But um, you can't make a claim without evidence. So uh, the way you should write a case from the ground up is start with your claim, find the best evidence you can, and instead of getting hung up on it, on whether the source is good enough, just have a source, and then when you find something better, you found something better. And logic is not, but that is not evidence. No, it's, logic is by definition not evidence. 
Oh, okay. It is good, it is sound, it makes sense, right? But you need to support that logic, right? Because your logic is, in theory, based on premises. You need to prove the premise true. That's what the evidence does, right? You have a supportive evidence, empirical proof, in theory, that says this is true. Like, it's not enough in a debate generally to be like, this is a straw man fallacy. How? What is a straw man fallacy? Do you have evidence saying it's a straw man fallacy? Those kind of things, right? The last thing I'll say, just because it's lunchtime, I want to get everyone out of here, uh, is what we haven't got to talk about is despite the fact we are not reading this last sentence, you always need to leave at least the sentence before and the sentence after the part you highlight in order to provide context so that someone can see whether you have cut this card out of context, right? It's possible that the next line could say, actually, we just made all that up. And if you were to cut that out and not have it there, someone can find that out, go to the tournament director and say, this is a lie, they cut this out of context, they should have lost the round or they should be removed from the tournament, right? So there are checkbacks to make sure the evidence is somewhat true in theory. So the two line, what did you say, one line or two lines? Or? It's probably a good rule to do two lines before and after. The easiest way to do it is if it's something like this where it's the start of the paragraph, you need the entire paragraph. Okay. Some people will do like three pages and just have really, because it could be a 100 page CRS Congress research, uh, re, uh, yeah, research service report, right? You're not going to put 100 pages in there, but you might put five if you cut it from five different pages and they weren't all together. You cannot leave out text. You can shrink this text and make it smaller. These raw functions are verbatim, but you have to, have to, have to include the context of the evidence. Why is it better to do it like this rather than just providing uh, a source material and summarizing what it says? Because if you're not doing direct quotation, it makes it really easy to misconstrue what the author actually said. And because of the debate case, really, I have... wouldn't it actually maybe even be better? You know, I mean, or couldn't it be better? A, a debate case might have. 40 different citations, and this makes it easy to visually check whether the source does say that, having to read 40 summaries and then cross-reference some of the actual articles to see whether they're fairly representative would take a while. It seems like it. what it really is is a sort of a fast way of, uh, of doing something that really probably requires more thought, which is to take a, you know an article and, and summarize it in your I mean, this doesn't. There is a format of debate for that. It's called public. That's a different. But it only exists in high school. In college, all evidentiary formats. It's debate. all like this. Well, no, that's and, only for evidence. And partly, you do what you're saying. You could say, according to CNN in 2016, this, without having to directly quote that. But in LD, that is not the case. You have to have direct citation for it to be a valid argument. Because it isn't really direct citation. It's it's sort of. You know, making something up by combining pieces of words. Or, or well, so in, like in this case, words, though, that sentence literally that they weren't combined to begin with. Well, so in this sentence, so, though, it literally does say it. Are you disputing the fact that it says it doesn't matter? It does, what? but there's no punctuation. So what is that? It's a, it's a sentence fragment, I guess. You know, but uh, or or it isn't a sentence. What you know? What I guess it isn't a sentence fragment. It's just two thirds of a sentence or something. But, you know, so it just seems odd, you know. To it know. is odd, but it's convention. Yeah, and, and, if I, and if I had two notes on that, the first is the only real negative effect of this is that it could be used to intentionally mislead. Right, which, right, I understand that, yeah. Which then is what the debate is about, and that's why we post our cases online so people can examine them and test those things. Yeah. Um, so that's also a part of the process that's unique to LD. The second bit is uh, everything you're talking about, how to uh, assess whether a claim is true and really apply critical thinking to it and all of that, all of that is very valid. I would also think of the debate as part of that function. Like, a part of the debate is to seek the truth. Your goal in LD is not to find a case that is perfect and impossible to respond to, right? And that's an important concept in debate. A lot of people think that their goal is to give the perfect first speech where the negative cannot respond to it. That's not really your goal. Your goal is to give a good first speech and then address the responses. So you're not trying to avoid the challenges to it. Um, 
you can invite challenges to it and then just have the debate and prove through the course of the debate whether something is valid. Yeah, but with that, it is indeed a little bit into lunchtime, so I would recommend you do that because other lectures have the wrong time. Uh, if you see us around, you can ask any questions you have.